Do you guys remember that sound? I remember that sound all too frequently. So this is gonna be 10 games in my Game Boy collection. Now my Game Boy collection is kinda limited right now, but I do have a few staples for the system. Now I have so many fond memories of taking this thing, going on road trips, playing the heck out of this thing in the back seat of a car when we're going on a family vacation, stuff like that, that I'm sure a lot of you do too. So let's look at 10 games that I immediately had to get in my collection for the Game Boy. Now I gave it away at the start there. Number one in my Game Boy collection is gonna be Super Mario Land. This one brings back so many nostalgic memories. Just putting it in the Game Boy and turning it on and hearing that music, all those memories just come rushing back. And I'm just filled with nostalgia for this and the Game Boy. Now I love that they brought Mario to the handheld and I love that this game just feels like a Mario game. Honestly, the little shells that blow up on the Koopa Troopas in this one, I think that's a really neat touch they added to this. The Goombas kind of to me resemble the mushrooms just in like villain form, which I also thought was really cool. This brought us some new enemies. It brought us some different lands and I really, really love this game. Now I can remember sitting in the back seat of my parents' car, going on family road trips, family vacations, and having this thing, having the Game Boy and playing this one. I had the magnifying glass attachment for the Game Boy and it was all scratched up, but I still tried to use it whenever I could. I used to have this little blue fanny pack that I would carry my Game Boy and all my Game Boy games in. And I thought it was just so cool that I could take my games with me wherever we went. I could play video games anytime I wanted. And back then, that was awesome. <laughs> Hope is to team up with Mario in the totally new Super Mario Land. Guide him on the Nintendo Game Boy through all the mysteries and terrors of ancient Egypt. Battle all the horrors of the deep and master with Mario lots of weird worlds to give him a happy ending and make your world a little more fun. New Super Mario Land, another exciting game for Game Boy. Each sold separately. Nintendo, now you're playing with power, portable power. Now the controls might not be the tightest. It can get a little difficult at times, but with those bonus levels, getting those extra lives, if you're hitting those extra lives, it definitely makes the game a lot easier. Now it might be nostalgia or it might be the submarine level, but this game just kind of makes me emotional thinking about it. All those memories going on vacation with my family. I'm sure you guys have those memories too with the Game Boy if you had it. Such a fun system and really cutting edge for the time for us. Now I also had a Game Gear and I had a few games on that. Maybe eventually we'll look at that. But really for now, the Game Boy is always kind of going to be one of my favorite handheld systems based on nostalgia. And this game right here sets it off for me. Number one in my Game Boy collection is going to be Super Mario Land. Now I always have loved the cases that we got with the Game Boy, these little clamshell cases. I honestly thought those were so cool. Right to this day, I think that's an awesome way to carry your games around. And that brings us to game number two in my Game Boy collection. Now there's two different series on the Game Boy that are titled Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy Legend has three different games. We'll talk about that in another one. But Final Fantasy Legends, those are gonna kind of be the first of the Saga games. Final Fantasy Adventure is the first one in the Seiken Densetsu series, which technically makes it the first mana game and connected to Secret of Mana. But the title for this one in Japan is actually Seiken Densetsu Final Fantasy Gaiden. So maybe they meant for these series to be connected back then. But in Europe, it's called Mystic Quest, and we already have one of those on the Super Nintendo over here. So it's a little confusing, but that doesn't take away from this game. Now, this is an action RPG that definitely feels like a mana game. There's that power bar at the bottom. There's tons of weapons. There's lots of skill points, and you can kind of make your character however you want him to be. So tank me up. Like this one just throws you right in. First, I'm a gladiator. Then I'm running away from a dark lord, and then I'm looking for this night. The story starts really fast in this one. But honestly, it's a fun little game, especially on the Game Boy. Something you can take with you and have a lot of fun with. Now, the tunes in this one are actually pretty good. I'm excited to play more of this one. Now, there is a remake to this on the Game Boy Advance. It's called Sword of Mana. I'm definitely going to be on the hunt for that too. But I really want to play this. I love there's kind of that story behind these Final Fantasy games. Like this one's a Final Fantasy game by name and a mana game by gameplay. And I've 
I've always loved that. I enjoy the fact that Final Fantasy 2 here is Final Fantasy 5 in Japan and 3 is 6. I always thought I was smart for knowing that as a kid. And game number two in my Game Boy collection is going to be Final Fantasy Adventure. I like that the Game Boy games make me want to just go on a trip and just take the time to just play some of these games on the road, going somewhere or doing something. I think that'd be really fun. Now, I don't know if this one is one I would take with me on a road trip. Game number three in my Game Boy collection is gonna be Paperboy. Now, this is the 1990 release of Paperboy on the Game Boy. So Paperboy came from the arcade to home console and then it came to the Game Boy. But um, like this is just the Nintendo version shrunk down. Like, what have we done here, Nintendo? This one's just smaller, tighter, and has no colors. I kind of feel like I need the colors in order to play this. Like, I don't know how to play this on the Nintendo, but normally I try to use the color of the house to throw the newspaper. This one is super random. I'm just gonna keep throwing them. Uh, I guess look out for your windows, folks. But it's Paperboy, it's a classic, and it's one that I'm kind of glad that I have on the Game Boy. Number three in my Game Boy collection is gonna be Paperboy. Warning, such behavior is irresponsible, mature, and very foolish. We recommend you try it at home. Paperboy from Mindscape for your Nintendo Entertainment System. Game number four in my Game Boy collection is going to be Terminator 2 T2 Judgment Day. Now this is an LJN game, but it's actually programmed by bits, so maybe LJN isn't really to blame for this one. Now, this game is a little confusing, especially that first level. Now, Sarah Connor tells me I need to rescue John Connor, but I don't really know how. She doesn't really provide me with that information. So I'm running around, there's all these like shield generator towers. So I just started blowing them up. And then I got to the end of that level and she's like, no, you did that wrong. You have to start over again. So I started over again, did it again. I tried to do it in a different order this time and I still got it wrong. But I did jump into this like flashing block of pixels about halfway through that level. And at that point, she finally tells me what to do, but I've already messed that up. So I had to start over again. So now I know I need to destroy these towers tallest to shortest just avoid these terminators which don't seem to be that big of a threat anyways and then i get to the end of the level and then all of a sudden this thing is shooting at me this giant tank robot thing is blasting at me so i just kind of tanked that and destroyed it and then it was on to try to find a terminator and find a special terminator in a special room like i kind of felt like there was a theme with this one like, it's not a bad game. I can't say it's a great game, though. It is fun to play, but, like, the correct information of what I need to do right at the start of the level would have been really helpful. Like, why not just tell me what the goal is instead of having me hunt down the goal halfway through the level? But it kind of makes for a fun game. I mean, it is a side-scrolling run-and-gun game, and that's kind of what I want to do is just kind of run and shoot enemies not try to solve these riddles and find them throughout the levels. Again, it's not a bad game, but T2 Judgment Day is gonna be game number four in my Game Boy collection. Game number five in my Game Boy collection is one that I truly love. It's gonna be Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. This is such a great game. This is one of my favorites in the series. Now, I love the original Legend of Zelda and I do have fond memories of Adventures of Link. Link to the Past is amazing and this one follows right along with that. This like top-down version of gameplay is how a Zelda game should be for me personally. But hey, I also love Roger Moore as James Bond, so I get it, I'm probably wrong. 
Fancy that. I loved every part of my playthrough of Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. This one hits all the marks for a Zelda game for me. I love the adventure of it. I like the little side-scrolling areas that kind of mixed in. This one actually pushed me to look and get those Oracle of Season and Ages games. This one is just how a Zelda game should be for me. If you haven't played this, this is amazing in my opinion. Now there is an updated version of this you can play, but this one, the classic version of it, I absolutely loved playing this game. I actually love the story behind this one, and I don't even know why. I love what they did with this one. And I'm so glad Link's Awakening is number five in my Game Boy collection. Game number six in my Game Boy collection is another one that brings back fond memories of road trips and family vacations. Game number six in my Game Boy collection is gonna be TMNT Fall of the Foot Clan. Now I may have never beat this one as a kid, but I used to love playing this. It just feels different from the NES Turtles games, kind of maybe akin to that first one, but this one's really its own animal, its own turtle, if you will. This one just came at the perfect time for me as a kid. I was in love with the turtles when I got this one as a kid. Leonardo is always gonna be the man to me. I love that character. I love everything about the Ninja Turtles. Whoa! Join the turtles on foot patrol in their battle-ready sewer tubes featuring wacky pizza slice and oars, depth charge, and rotating foot blasters. Let me show you my new toy. It's the foot ski with its deadly harpoon gun, shredding torpedoes, and electric leeches. Could this be the end of good, clean fun in the sewer? Here goes the neighborhood. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. From Playmates. And I love this just because it's a Turtles game. That nostalgia just comes rushing back when I put this in and play it. So much fun, such a great game. Side-scrolling kind of beat-em-up style game, fighting through these levels, enjoying every second of it. Oh, they've got all those little characters in there. Honestly, Ultra and Konami, they did a great job with some of these Turtles games. Game number six in my Game Boy collection, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Fall of the Foot Clan, this one brings back nostalgia for me. Game number seven in my Game Boy collection is gonna be Tiny Toons Adventures, Babs's Big Break. So first off, I don't know why I'm not playing as Babs if it's her big break, but this one feels a lot like the first one on the NES. If you're familiar with that one, I think you'll enjoy this one. And this one does fix some problems I had with that NES version. I like that in this one, I can swap between my characters anytime I want. I can swap between Buster, Plucky, and Hampton. They all have different attacks and kind of do different things. And I love the fact that I can just swap whenever I need to. This is a fun platformer game, especially if you're familiar with the ones on the NES. I kind of feel like with the handhelds, with the Game Boy. The games either need to be really story driven for me to kind of keep my attention like Link's Awakening or something like this where it's just something I can throw in, have a little bit of fun playing it. I don't feel like I'm struggling with it, just get to have a good time. And I definitely feel like this one is fun to pop in and just have fun with. Game number seven in my Game Boy collection is gonna be Tiny Toons Adventures, Babs's Big Break. Just another one in that Tiny Toons series we got on the Nintendos back in the day. So number eight in my Game Boy collection is going to be Donkey Kong Land 2. Now, without ever playing any of the Donkey Kong Land games on the Game Boy and only having the Donkey Kong Country games as a reference, I always kind of thought this was going to be a lesser version of the Donkey Kong Country games. But honestly, the more I played it, the more I realized that these games do kind of stand on their own. Even though everything in it, all the sprites, everything like that is just reused Game Boy versions of the Super Nintendo games. I like that the characters seem really quick in this one. I like the level designs. Honestly, I think it's really fun. I kind of like that each level is almost preparing me for the next time I need to use that skill. So maybe I'll be able to handle it when it happens. The more I played it, the more I realized that Rare didn't just give us a lesser version of the Super Nintendo games. 
They tried really hard to make sure that these games stood on their own. Now, I don't like that I can't save as frequently as I would like to. Those seem sometimes to be a little stretched out between where I can save, especially on a handheld console. But this is a lot of fun. This game really turned me from a skeptic into someone that really enjoys it, which makes me super glad that I have this one in my collection. I'm really excited to get the rest of the games in this series and play through them as well. Number eight in my Game Boy collection is Donkey Kong Land 2. He's the beast you loved on Super NES. And now we've captured him on Game Boy in an all new game with all new enemies and worlds. Donkey Kong Land. New for Game Boy and Super Game Boy. Game number nine in my Game Boy collection is gonna be Pipe Dream. Now this one brings back memories of playing it with my cousin Robbie. Now I can remember going to my aunt and uncle's house. My uncle Ron was this wild and crazy guy. He had this 80s strawberry blonde mullet. He always had a button up shirt that was always undone like halfway down his chest. And I remember that house so vividly. I remember the kitchen was like a bi-level house. So the kitchen was above kind of overlooked the living room. I remember my parents being up in the kitchen with my aunt and uncle. I remember this big comfy couch. I remember this old CRT TV. I remember sitting on that couch with my cousin Robbie, someone who I'd always looked up to growing up. I remember him having the Nintendo version of Pipe Dream and I can remember him putting it in that day. Now I had Marble Madness as a kid and my cousin Robbie had Pipe Dream on the NES. For some reason I always compared those Fort. two and I always thought that Pipe Dream was going to be such a better game because my cousin Robbie always had all the cool things everything Robbie did was cool to me so naturally I thought pipe dream was gonna be a better game now I'm sure the NES version is a lot different from the Game Boy version and I can remember all those details so vividly but the one thing I can't remember from that night is the actual gameplay of Pipe Dream on the NES. So getting this and getting to play it was a really fun moment for me. Putting it in the system, turning it on, I kind of knew what the gameplay was, but this is gonna be one of those games that means more for the memories than for the puzzle game it is. Do I know what I'm doing in it? Not really. Is it an interesting game? Yeah, totally. Like I'm trying to line stuff up and keep that flow path going. I suck at it. Definitely needs more practice on this. But I love that I have those memories associated with my Uncle Ron and my cousin Robbie when I look at Pipe Dream. Those are memories that are always gonna be there and I love that about this game. So I'm so glad to have this one in my collection. Number nine in my Game Boy collection. I also have it on the Nintendo now, which is super cool pipe dream now number 10 in my game boy collection it's going to be a kirby game it's going to be kirby's dreamland 2 now this one actually has 39 stages and seven different boss fights i love what they did with this one i like to introduce these little characters that he can ride on these like pets that he can do different things with and it's just a really fun kirby game what they did with this one is take stuff they already had and just made it better this is a fun game i love the little graphics in this one really well done side scrolling platformer such a fun game one that anyone could really put in and just have fun with and more Kirby I mean who wouldn't want more Kirby such a cute little character this one is such a fun cute little game now this one I never had as a kid so I'm really excited to have this one in my collection I want to get the other ones I do have the one on the Nintendo I just think that the Kirby games are so much fun but Kirby's such a cool character come on Nintendo give me more Kirby So that's going to be 10 games in my Game Boy collection. Really glad I have this. Um, I, I'm not really sure how I want to collect for the Game Boy. I might go all out eventually, but for now, I'm just kind of picking and choosing the ones that I kind of want to have in my set, curating that collection for now. Maybe down the road, I'll have to go full bore and go for all of them. I know there's a ton of Game Boy games, but I just love the Game Boy so much. Why wouldn't I want to have them all? They 
always said it wasn't humanly possible. But now you can have all the power and excitement of Nintendo right in the palm of your hand. Introducing Game Boy. It's portable, it's in stereo, and its games are interchangeable. Plus, Game Boy comes with the outrageous new game, Tetris. And for head-to-head -head competition, use the revolutionary video link and blow your opponent away. Game Boy, only from Nintendo. Now you're playing with power, portable power.